Welcome back to Bullstack Figure Reviews. Today, we will be taking a look at McFarlane Toys Spawn Reaper. <coughs> and here he is in packaging. I am feeling a bit underwhelmed by looking at Reaper through the window packaging, but I will reserve judgment until after I have opened him. He comes in the usual McFarlane blister box packaging. Here we see the McFarlane Toys logo, and to the left, he has a 14 plus disclaimer with not a toy statement. This side of the box says Spawn, and the other side of the box shows you an image of Reaper. The back of the box has some splendid comic art and the usual 22 moving parts statement. So now with that, let's open Reaper. And here he is. He reminds me a lot of another McFarlane figure where the character is beautifully depicted in the comics, but poorly executed in a tangible form. And that figure is Overkill. This figure, like Overkill, is not aesthetically pleasing. McFarlane was not able to hit the mark when capturing the look of his own character, which is baffling to me. Starting with his head, the comic book version's helmet has a visor that integrates perfectly into the rest of the helmet, almost like a motorcycle helmet. Here, instead, we got some really sharp lines where the visor is. The flat amber yellow here was a horrible choice. The body has texturing where there shouldn't be any. His suit armor has an orange peel wall texture when it should be smooth. McFarlane gave him a tank body mold when he should have been given a slender body mold. I'm not sure why he has spikes on his hands or was given these ill-flavored high shows. Unfortunately, the gauntlets and the shows follow the same color pattern as the helmet by using the same flat amber yellow. Overall, a very disappointing figure. The only silver lining to the Reaper are the accessories that I will later go over. For articulation, Reaper here has a ball joint in his neck that allows his head to go up and down, and it can go all the way around and has some pretty decent tilt. His shoulder is on the ball joint that allows it to go up and down and all the way around. And this armor piece is flexible so it doesn't get in the way of articulation. He does feature a bicep cut, double jointed elbows, his hand can rotate and has a hinge. His diaphragm and waist have a ball joint. It allows his diaphragm to go forward and back, tilt side to side, and rotate. The waist does the same exact thing. Reaper's legs can kick up and down, in and out. His hips can swivel. No thigh cut, double jointed knees. His foot can go up and down and rotate. He has toe hinge. Reaper here stands at a little bit over seven and a half inches. He does well with other seven inch figures. Here he is with McFarlane mega figure overkill and McFarlane Witcher Eridan figure. I do not know enough about this character to say for certainty, but he probably does not fit with six inch figure lines. Here he is with Marvel Legends Scorpion Venom. For accessories, he comes with a pair of alternate hands, A pair of nicely sculpted wings, and I do like them in flat black, which I'm probably in the minority. A generic display stand. And lastly, a beautifully sculpted enormous side. Mm. 
not bad. After receiving Spawn's help as a child, Eddie Frank was left in a violent home and forced to protect his younger brother against their abusive father. Years later, he was used as a weapon by the armies of heaven. He was turned into the mindless redeemer and sent to assassinate Al Simmons. Spawn used his powers to set him free from the control of heaven. After an explosion, Eddie awoke from his mind control stupor as the newly forged hero, Reaper. And now for my final thoughts. This figure is highly disappointing and not up to par with what McFarlane can produce. If you are a Spawn toy collector and a completionist, then I begrudgingly recommend this figure. However, if you are not a Spawn toy collector or completionist, then this is an easy, hard pass. And now with that, if you enjoyed this figure review, please remember to comment, like, share, and subscribe.